Holding their comic books, the girls hurried to the window and pressed against the magical glass. Just like before, they moved through it as if they were pushing their hands into a rippling pool. As soon as they were out, they flew to the top of the spire. Samira was standing on the platform at the top of the spire, staring into the distance and turning slowly on the spot. Fluffy white clouds drifted past as Rachel and Kirsty fluttered up to join her. Have you seen anything that might help us? Rachel asked. Samira shook her head and sighed. We have found something strange, said Kirsty. The girls showed Samira their stories in their comic books. Vicious villain, Samira exclaimed. These comics have all changed. I do not remember them being like this. It is as if what makes the superhero super has just gone from the story, said Rachel. It is because my all-seeing eye mask is missing, said Samira. It helps superheroes to see where and who needs their help and to know where to go and when. Your favorite superheroes don't even know that they are needed. And she held up her hand suddenly and put her head on one side. What is it? asked Trusty. There is a problem in Goblin Grotto, said Samira. The girls were amazed and Samira smiled when she saw their surprise. I had super hearing, she explained. There was a loud rumbling noise and then lots of goblins started yelling. Come on, we have to investigate. The three fairies zoomed into the sky and headed towards the goblin village, flying in a triangle shape with Samira at the front and her left up arm outstretched. I hope that we are doing the right thing, said Trusty to Rachel as they flew along. Goblins do not wa always want help from the fairies. Soon they were flying over the familiar wonky roof of Goblin Grotto. Rachel and Kirsty visited the village several times and they recognized the streets filled with ramshackle wooden huts where the goblins lived and the big central square at the heart of the village. Samira led them to where a crowd of goblins had gathered in one of the main streets. They were standing around a pile of rubble, pointing and shouting. Maybe we should go down in disguise, said Trusty. There is no time, said Samira. Someone is in trouble. She whooshed down and landed on top of the rubble. Rachel and Trusty were close behind her. What happened here? Samira asked. The goblins were so worried that they did not even insult the fairies. The ground started shaking, one of them cried out. One of the hearts fell down and trapped a goblin. He is still under there. Tell him to push his way out, one goblin shouted. No, tell him to dig down until he comes out on the other side, yelled another. The other side of what, you poop? said the third goblin. More and more goblins started shouting. Samira shook her head and bent down. She started to lift the rubble a piece at a time. Rachel and Trusty bent down to help. But they could not fit a single piece of they could not lift a single piece of rubble. It is so heavy, said Rachel panting. Leave it to me, said Samira. I have super strength. The goblins will soon be free. The goblins in the crowd fell silent when they saw what Samira was doing. For a few moments, the only sound was the crash of rubble as the superheroes, superhero fairy moved it. Then there was a muffled scrub. About time. A dusty, grumpy goblin clambered out of the rubble and stuck his tongue out at the fairies. 
He is free, said Trusty with a sigh of relief. Suddenly, a droplet in a black top hat caught her eye. He was standing at the front of the crowd of droplets, and he leaned back with his hand to his forehead. He looks more relieved than the droplet you saved, said Trusty to Samira. The droplet suddenly turned as she had heard something. Then, with a look of utter panic, he raced away from the rubble. Oh, my wings and wishes! Someone needs help," said Samira. "I can hear them shouting. Let us go." She zoomed off with Rachel and Trusty close behind her.